Good evening, everybody. It's the Reaper here. Today, I'm bringing you, once again, an installment in the R Destruction series. If you haven't listened to the first one, I do very much urge you to do so. And if you have, well, <laughs> turn off the lights, get comfortable, maybe with a beverage or some kind of food you like to eat, <laughs> and get ready, cause shit's about to get real. Reaper drops me under the table in front of Edmed and our other medic, Borvo. You guys got ten minutes. Patch him up into fighting shape. Reaper says, the two medics salute, shock in their eyes as they stare at the Zeus commander. I'm gonna go mop up the remaining perfs. Can't be more than a hundred by the looks of it. Reaper states, walking over to the wall and picking out an M4 and another magazine from the shelf underneath it. Putting it on his chest carrier, he leaves out the door we came in, not even bothering with the other wall which has an assortment of M4 attachments. Holy shit, that was him! <laughs> I know, I know. Edmed replies, they cut off half of my left leg's combat pants and start the work on the wound, which continues to leak blood from my thigh. Frosty, you're lucky you escaped with your life. And Med says, should have let me stay and help. He finishes, I wasn't supposed to survive, asshole. I couldn't allow us to be down another medic. And it looks like we've only got two of them. So, Edmed stabs a needle into my leg with a bit too much force. Squeezing the needle full of ISs while Borvo finishes the stitching on my thigh. ISs, or isolated steroids, gives a boost to the limb injected with it. And only that limb, if protocol allowed for it, you could essentially double the effectiveness of any body part it's used on. But, since my leg was nearly out of commission, it brings it up to working condition. Your arm is a different story. The bullet tore apart most of the muscles that are used to hold up a rifle, so... Uh, when we leave, you're going to have to strap an M40 or back and run a sub. It'll be easier to hold up. Give it a few days and the IS will heal it up nicely. But for now, <laughs> a 45 caliber vector is your best bet. Borvo says, finishing my arm. Rapid gunfire can be heard in the distance. Only one set. No return fire. This continues on for another few minutes from all around us. I swing my feet off the table and put the weight on my legs. I nearly dropped to the ground because of the sharp pain radiating from my wounds. Fuck me, I say, grimacing as I walk over to the gun wall. I pick up an M4, favoring my right arm. I quickly get the modding done and swing it over my back. I grab 500 rounds worth of magazines and put them in my bag, along with uncoupling the M4 mag carrier and switching it out for a much smaller 45 pouch rig. Reaper taught me many things, one of those things being an M4A1 in the right hands is a very deadly weapon. Put four to two times toggle scope on it with some other choice mods and you've got a weapon of mass destruction. I grimace as I pick up the Chris Vector. Stock, you're looking at, uh, at a range of 50 meters. I take out the barrel and put in a 16 inch long extension mod, upping the range to 64 meters of effective range. I throw a red reticle on the top, a lightweight grip underneath, and a flashlight and laser sight on the sides. Where we're going, I'm going to need something ready for up close and personal. Reaper stands in front of the remaining 20 or so soldiers in the courtyard near the mortar. Behind us, a hundred odd civilians and a few babies being held by parents or designated guardians stand idly by waiting for their instructions. Alright people, another big wave is coming and obviously we can't stay to greet them. He taps his boot on a sewer drain. We have just enough time to get everybody down into the sewer system and fire a mortar barrage directly on top of this base. We've got enough things to worry about, but getting followed isn't going to be one of them. 
at least for a while. I stand next to Nick, our heavy weapons specialist, who is easily over 400 pounds of muscle. I've seen him rip a perf apart with his bare hands. He holds in one hand what is usually a helicopter's minigun, so I'm feeling pretty safe at the moment. We've got a lot of ground to cover if we stand any chance of making it to Operation Seed. And, boys, he gestures to us soldiers. Hand a gas mask to everybody here. They are not to remove them. The perfs must not want anybody hiding in the sewers. <laughs> they fucking gassed them. Also, when I was scouting down there, I could hear a lot of things moving in the dark. Now, I managed to avoid them, but now we've got a lot more of us, so we're not going to get that lucky. Flashlights on, lasers on, let's get it. When everybody, including the damn infants, had gas masks on, Reaper picked up the heavy sewer cap and tossed it like a frisbee. He jumps into the hole and we start getting people down there, all of them with flashlights attached to their masks. I watch as people are funneled inside. Edmet approaches me. Well, why doesn't Reaper ever take off his armor? We could reverse engineer it. Give us a leg up. <laughs> He's been fighting non-stop for years. <laughs> Only takes it off to clean it, I say. I've got so many questions. Do you... Do you know what he looks like? But most importantly, how do you know him so well? <laughs> Who do you think put me in charge, bud? I fire the mortar myself and jump down the hall, running over to where everybody is standing. Behind me, the mortars hit and bury the entrance to the sewer. As the natural light leaves us, we all flip the flashlights and lasers on, the throbbing pain in my arm and thigh being an excruciating force. Reaper talks to the radio in our ears. Alright guys, me, Frosty, Edmed, and Nick are going to go with Group A. Austin, take Borvo and split up the other soldiers and civilians into an even for A and B. Austin is our technical operator. With the commanders of each group having a digital map for two different paths to Operation Seed, we start the trek through the sewers. My feet clap against the wet sewer floor. Reaper and Nick, along with an assortment of soldiers, hold up the front of the pack, while me and Edamed, with another assortment of soldiers, hold the back. On our side, we have five unproven recruits, our flashlights doing an okay job of breaking the moist, chemical gas green sewer. In an hour of walking without trouble, I continue to swivel around, making sure to cover behind us, my left arm struggling to hold up even the small, Submachine gun. My green laser sweeps across the ground as I give my left arm a rest. Hey, you all right there, partner? Edmed asks. Yeah, but fuck, man, why couldn't I just die? <laughs> well, mister, I'm best friends with the most dangerous man on the planet. I think you... Wait, what the fuck? Edmed stops walking with me and turns around. Reaper, hold up the group, Edamed says into the radio. Something going on back there? Over, Reaper says back. Edmed frantically starts counting something off on his fingers. Fuck. Fuck! Frosty, we have five recruits back here, right? Yeah, uh, I think. Why? I count the soldiers nervously staring at me and Edmed. Four. Fuck, Reaper. Fuck. We're missing somebody. Over. I, I say into the radio. What the fuck? Over. I'm gonna check it out, I say. I slowly move back the way we came, checking each cylindrical corridor I pass. My gun at the ready, laser sweeping across everything. Something very quickly and quietly splashes behind me. I flip around, almost falling due to the strain on my legs. Nothing. Uh, are you positive we had five? I say into the radio, continually moving in a circle to look for any sign of life in the pitch black sewer. Well, I'm not 100%, but you, you noticed as well. We don't have the resources to go hunting, 
So get back the fuck over here and keep the civilians safe. Reaper calls me back to the group. I slowly jog back up to Edmed and we start moving again. What in the flying fuck, dude? I swear, I swear we had five. How do we lose someone without even noticing? Edmed says. Hey, recruit, who'd we lose? I ask the silent soldier walking closest to me, the eyes of his gas mask completely fogged up. Without saying anything, he shrugs. It, it was Gavin, another states. Shit. Well, stay frosty. Obviously, the civilians need to come first. I say. I up my vigilance, almost continually walking backwards. The other recruits try with shaky hands to mirror me. Something you gotta learn early on as a soldier is that death is a part of the job. An hour or two of frantic pacing back and forth, my back runs into a civilian. I flip around, frantically apologizing. The girl with messy brunette curls apologizes through her gas mask. She appears to be one of our scientists, her cliche lab coat falling just above her knees. Hey Frosty, we've got two recruits up here. They're, well, hanging by the walls from their organs. Looks like some fucked up artwork over. What? I'm coming out there. The fuck you are. Keep that perimeter tight, over. Yes, sir, I say. I motion two fists together to my squad in the rear. Everybody tightens up to each other, and we walk backwards, guns raised. The last in the formation being the fogged gas mask recruit. Man, that sucks, Edmund says, putting a hand on the soldier's shoulder. The recruit's hand enters Edmed's stomach and out the other side, causing our medic to vomit blood, filling up his gas mask. I yell, Oh, fuck! I raise my gun, but the recruit kicks it out of my hand. A small gray spike forms from the soldier's middle finger, which goes straight from my forehead. I catch his wrist, leaving me staring at the morphed weapon. I tackle him back, screams erupting around me. I whip out my Beretta and fire into the stomach of the monster, whose body wriggles unnaturally out from under me and retreats into the sewer. The three remaining recruits fire wildly at the now incredibly tall soldier that ducks out of sight. Gun stay up! I yell and kneel in front of Edmed. His gas mask is filled with blood. Blood that drips from the mask seams. I open it up and let the blood pour out, then put it back on. A hand stained a crimson red. Edmed's labored breathing being a loud force in the now silent sewer. The back half of the civilians staring at us, while the remaining recruits trigger happily stare back into the sewer. Hey, hey, what do I do? Come on, tell me how to fix you, my friend. <gasps> left jacket pocket he chokes out I rummage around and find a small box opening it up finding at least six large syringes clearly labeled morphine okay okay I got him how much do I give you time ticking by all of it it's getting harder for him to talk are you fucking kidding me? This will knock Reaper on his... I understand. There is no fixing him. <sighs> okay, brother. Okay. I jab the syringe into his leg and squeeze it completely. The brave medic loses consciousness. His breathing slows and then stops completely. I rip the dog tag off his chest and place it in my left breast pocket above my heart, next to Jeannie and Presley, three close friends, all dead. Hey, what is going on back there? Over. Nick says through the radio. Edmund is down. We are down to three recruits, and there's something watching us. It's fast, and it's dangerous. It can also fucking shapeshift, so stay vigilant and make sure your friendlies are friendlies. Over. We keep the perimeter tight, constantly scanning each other.
Although, I very much doubt the four of us could miss another two people getting taken. Reaper stops the group after another two hours, then buzzing me through the radio. Send one of your recruits up here. I'm going to come back to you. This next hallway is a dead end and the exit, so me and Nick are going to help you secure the rear flank. Looks like B-Team already made it. Over. I send a recruit up to the front to lead the civvies out of the sewer. The lumbering steps of Nick and a quick and elegant set of Reaper come behind me. I raise my vector up. The weapons of my team do the same. Our flashlights don't illuminate the long sewer corridor completely, so we aim blankly into the darkness 50 meters away. A gray spike shoots out of the darkness stupidly fast. Reaper catches it in front of the recruit's neck, who falls back afraid. What looked like solid matter melts into a sickly gray goop in Reaper's hands. What the fuck? An ear-splitting scream. <laughs> Knocks everyone to the ground except Reaper, who fires directly into the darkness, pushing forward. Nick is the second up, unleashing the backpack-fed minigun. A long arm comes out of the darkness. Reaper moves his head out of the way of the arm, and in one quick motion puts a knife into it. It tries to pull back, but Reaper yanks the huge beast into the light. The tall, disproportionately skinny monster with arms far, far longer than its body is dragged toward us. I'm third up. I pull the trigger, a Spitfire bullet's only beaten in speed by the minigun, which is fired into the monster. It's blank and horrifically smooth face being torn apart, bullet after bullet. Nick, me, and two recruits follow Reaper as he drags the hideous demon into the light. <sighs> Borvo, AS, study this thing's genetics, and Borvo, teach AS to be a medic. The scientist from earlier, gas mask, now replaced by nerdy glasses, follow the reaper as he single-handedly drags the most likely 1,000-pound monster. We stand, surrounded by the biggest industrial district in the Midwest.